I'm a big fan of power to weight numbers and I'm pretty sure in your prime fitness you probably produced a fair few watts. Can you share what your all-time power to weight numbers are for one hour? No. <laughs> My lawyer said always, never talk about numbers. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Now you're no. retired, you're allowed to. Yeah, no, I think, of course, uh, when I started cycling, there was not so much about powers and numbers. There was more about heart rate. Yeah. I learned becoming professional with heart rate. And today it's all really like power. Yes. So of course, I pushed a lot of power. <laughs> and yeah, it's always depending. I mean, of course, I have a certain weight or I had a certain weight, uh, around 82 kilos average, but mostly I will, by finishing my career at the Olympic Games, it was 78 kilos. Time trial was quite long, tough, over an hour. And on the end was, yeah, over an hour for 450. I think it's not bad, right? 450 watts yeah. for over an hour. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> Look, I know I'm interrupting the interview flow, I get it, but can we put that into perspective just for one minute here? Because there will be people out there watching Mum and Dad, how are you going? That don't really understand what 450 watts for 72 minutes actually means. And before the keyboard warriors get going predictably and talk about a motor in the bike, can we please put the small dick syndrome to the side for today's video, spare us all, and let's respect this man for what he is, an incredible athlete, and it turns out a really good bloke too. So to put that into perspective, 450 watts for 72 minutes. Let's compare that to a recreational and amateur road cyclist, being me. Surprise, surprise, bringing yourself into it again. So I call myself, when I'm in form, which is not very often, a middle of the pack, club level, A grade road cyclist. And if I was ever gonna win an A grade club level race, which I've never done before, but if I was going to win one, I would use my strength to slingshot myself out of the bunch towards the end, which is my five minute power, which I personal best at the start of this year at a very similar body weight to Fabian, achieving 458 watts for five minutes. And I thought that was pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Fabian has pretty much taken that exact same wattage and carried on for another one hour and seven minutes. That's pretty unbelievable. In the teams I have been, where also they have been sponsored, we did some three minute tests uh, up in a small climb and roughly I had like six, 640 for three minutes. 640 for three minutes. But now I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but what I still do, honestly, some sprints once in a while okay. at home, you know, like this uh, coming into the town sprint. So this sometimes I see still, I can still push uh, 1,300 watts okay. on a sprint, but I'm questioning all the time, is that the weight that helps to push so much watts? <laughs> um, the trainers we have in Tudor Pro Cycling Team, yeah. when they see sometimes my numbers, because it's everything also connected with my Wahoo, towards Strava, towards uh, training peaks and one of our trainers. So they see what I train. They are not impressed, but for my work hours and, and all my busy, I mean, everything what I do right now doesn't allow me to to ride properly. Yes. So that's why they say, it's not bad. Okay. If you lose 10 kilos, <laughs> you can come back. You could come back kind of, but no. Uh, okay. I what mean, about five to 10 minutes? You were saying this off camera. Yeah, I mean, maybe you remember Tirreno Adriatico time yes. trial. There was around 10K. Yes. 10 kilometer, 11 minutes, 12 minutes, depending. Uh, 520, something like 520 that. 520 watts yeah. for 11 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's crazy numbers. Try out. <laughs> try out. Try it out. Yeah. yeah. I'll last 30 seconds, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, but at least 30. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. No worries. Very no worry. interesting. So you've been retired now for almost seven years exactly. Yeah. Do you miss anything about being a pro cyclist? Miss the numbers. <laughs> you miss the numbers? No, no, honestly. No, serious now. Um, no, I don't miss anything. Even okay. when I retired. Uh, I'm happy. I mean, I have peace. I, I feel good. I'm, I was also not preparing just for it, but also I was ready to retire. Right. And when, when I retired on, on the highest stage possible in sport at the Olympic Games and then you win by a gold medal, somehow it seems to be easy to retire. But on the other hand, I took my time to learn, to experience, to feel, to see, to hear. Yeah, after five, six years, I found more my my space in what I good at and not because on the end 
when you retire as an athlete is to find a new identity, who you are, what you like and what, what you're capable to do or, or what's your motivation or what's your hobbies, whatever. I mean, it's everything you change. And um, I think um, now I have most of my piece, even I have a new big responsibility, but on basic, it's really, I'm, um, I have the motivation for it. I have, I have my freedom for it because I can do something what I see also what I'm good at. And this is, I can give to an organization uh, some values that I think um, are helping and uh, I think to the Prosegna team is my biggest piece at the moment, yes. So before we talk about that, did it take you a while to find your feet after you left pro cycling? Did you feel lost at all for a period of time? No, not lost, but um, not sure in which angle you really want to go. Do you want to be a bit an ambassador? Do you want to travel around the world? Do you want to talk only about your career and handshake people? On the end, I came out on this bubble, kind of, because a sports athlete on professional level lives in a bubble. He lives in his own world. Uh, and uh, when you retire, there's not so many. They call you, they want something from you because you're not anymore active. So that's also a learning process, but so far, I'm good. Yeah, that's great. So you mentioned Tudor Pro Cycling before. You're, you're the team owner yeah. of Tudor Pro Cycling. So why did you decide after five years of retirement from pro cycling to get back into it as a team owner? What is important to know is that before Tudor Pro Cycling, there was a Swiss Racing Academy existing and this team was falling apart. And when I heard about that, that these 16 Swiss young athletes will not have any more the chance to continue their dreams to become one day professional bike riders, I said, hey, let's help them, let's support them. And this is actually what happened. We, we supported with Rafael and myself. We said, uh, okay. And first of all, was not managing the team, was more godfather help them to find partners, sponsors and potential races that they can go to races. And this is what actually happened. Uh, we took it a bit closer to our company where we have also our events because on the end we came from an agency that organizes events, that does consultancy, that we have a few other things around in. And, and from there we came and come. And that's why it's different now that to the Procycling team is not just a team that popped out. No, it actually came out from from the agency and, and then the day came with, yeah, with the talk with Tudor and they heard about this project. They've been interesting to hear about that project. You mentioned the team owner, yes, but it's not my team, it's our team. Yes. I want that everyone feels part of it, that has a voice and we want to listen to this voice and, and this is important because with, the, with, with this we can grow and we can build and then we can win bike races. How we, how we win bike races? For sure not being at the back at the peloton and think, yeah, yeah, this will anyway come, no. So if you wait that something comes, nothing will come. If you do something in the front, you start also to build the mentality of a certain behave. And you might gain respect even more when you put your people in the front and they pull and maybe they don't get the result. But with this step by step, I believe definitely the result will come because uh, you build this mentality and then this mentality and when everyone works and then the win will come, then they say, I think we did it right. And so far there's nine victories. Uh, we are a young team. Last year there was nothing, kind of. There was just a small pro team, a small continental team. But we said we want to be a professional team from 2023 onwards. And it's almost ending the season and we learned a lot, but we still will learn a lot and that's cool. And you want to go world tour? Yeah, yeah, that's also a plan. I mean, uh, we want to win bike races. We want to be part of the top. What really has changed is, is, is definitely nutrition. Yeah, nutrition has changed a lot. Some recovery training has, has changed. But, but what I miss most is the human side. Right. I think it has to be a mix. For me, the mix will make the difference. And this so you, is think what I aim you, for. you think it's lost the human side a little bit. It's become yeah, a bit sometimes robotic. Sometimes I miss I don't say the fun part. Fun doesn't mean doing bad things. Huh? Yeah. Fun means also cycling is not only about numbers. That's what I mean a bit because sometimes they're like and younger athletes, younger athletes, younger athletes, but they're not human enough. They're not mature enough for maybe what they will have in the front of them. A young athlete wins bike races, got a lot of money, got a lot of attention, a lot of pressure. How we can handle that? A 20 boy, become dad is different when a 30 year man becomes dad. Mm. 10 years differences. So I became a really good, 
I, be, I have success with 25, 26. Today, there's 20 year boys, they're having already crazy results or 21, 22, and somehow they're still kids. Yes. I think this is also where we need to have attention. And, and we see it in our team, we have Matis Rondel, really, really young, super good boy. He did uh, Tour de l'Avenir, the Tour de France from the under 23. He arrived uh, top 10. I mean, of course he could go straight away to the World Tour, but no, it's too early. He, he is not ready. Not because about numbers, it's because of all his mature. I mean, he, he, he needs still to learn a lot of things. And I think with us, people will have time yes. because we have a plan, we talk together and it's not someone decides. We decide together and I think um, we have a great spirit, we have great people in, in our organization and this drives me, motivates me to give everything for the team. Yeah, that's great. We'll wrap up here shortly. Behind us, as I mentioned, there will soon be a lot of cyclists. They're here for your other big project, which is Chasing Cancellara. Yeah. A series of races, I believe it's six events, one Zwift race and five on road. This one tonight is Zurich to Zermatt. Is this the biggest one? Yeah, this is the pinnacle. This is the, the monument. Okay. It's our monument. And they're starting at one, one o'clock at night. At night. At <laughs> night. So they will have lights and everything. So they drive right through the night into the beauty of the morning. Yes. When the sun comes up and over the mountains. And uh, they will have tough times, challenges. And we together are going to have that as well in our ways. Yes. And um, it's so cool you can give to people a platform to challenge them, but also they challenge themselves. They experience things. Uh, they learn probably up and downs and good moments, bad moments, tough moments, beauty moments. Yeah, it's, it's actually, I'm always super proud, super happy when I see them on the start. I have a huge respect for everyone. And this is the message is here are everyone welcome. Here is not about that you are the first one. Yes. Here, sometimes, honestly, later you come, the more you are a role model. Because here we have stories. Here we create stories. Mm -hmm.